Hi, this is more or less a response video to a video on the Dubspot YouTube channel, uh, which is about creating the quote unquote ultimate drum rack. So I'll go ahead and quickly show you what it is they were doing, and then I'll show you an uh, alternative way of doing the same thing. The goal is to create a drum rack that contains multiple uh, kick drums, multiple snare drums, multiple hi-hats and then through macros allows you to select uh, which kick or snare or hi-hat you want to use. So I added the drum rack, now I'll find a sampler instrument and find some samples to add to it. As you can see I have a bunch of kick drum samples here. I'm gonna grab a, a run random amount of them rather than 127. The reason I'm doing this is because I want to show you a little trick that wasn't shown in the dub spot video. I'll first limit the key range Now going over to the selection, in the Dubspot video, even with less than 127 samples, if you select distribute ranges equally, what you now get is that each sample spans instead of one slot, it takes up uh, multiple slots in the, or a range, so in this case it goes from 0 to 4, which is not ideal. So let's undo that, select all the samples, as you can see I have 22 of them, meaning uh, the range I want to use is from 0 to 21. So grab all the samples, drag it all the way up to 21, and now select distribute ranges equally. And as you can see, every sample now occupies one slot rather than a range. And by now assigning the selector to a macro, you can now switch between all the samples. Of course you now need to limit this to uh, 21, like so. Let me change the view. There you go, calls all the way up to the last sample. And to complete the drum rack, you would now use the same approach for the snare drum and the hi-hat, uh, as they did in the dub spot video. The thing is, however, that creating a complete drum rack like that, you end up with a lot of samples. Eventually, you may end up with a drum rack containing two or three thousand or even more uh, sample files. And if you then add that drum rack to a document, uh, it takes a while for Ableton to load it and cache it. And also I've noticed that, for instance, if you add like a reverb to the drum rack, you may notice an increase in CPU usage. Now, what I started doing a while ago is rather than having a bunch of samples uh, separately added to a, a sampler device. I started combining them into one WAV file. Let's get rid of that. Like this, over here, this is the sampler it has 30 kicks in it. But as you can see, they all are inside the same file. Rather than having 30 files, I now have one WAV file, and then I assign the start and end of the sample within the sampler device. Now, I have to admit, it's a lot of extra work, but I do think it pays off in the end. So let's now have a look at how this is done. For that, I'm using Adobe Audition. But you should be able to do this with uh, about any audio editor like Audacity. The nice thing about Audition though is that it will allow you to uh, use a feature called Open Append. 
which then allows you to select a range of sample files and it will add them all to uh, a new file uh, one after the other just gonna grab a few kick drums here open them up you see it is now creating a new document for me and it also adds markers that um, are set to the start and end of that particular sample so you can now easily select the separate sample still it also adds a few extra markers that I don't need now ideally Ableton would and in my opinion should be able to recognize these markers and that would make life a whole lot easier but uh, as you can guess that is not the case so even with these markers uh, stored within the WAV file for some reason uh, Ableton does not use them and I hope that this is something they will add in the next version of Ableton Live now in case you're wondering why I think that is important if you just look at the markers here as you can see like the second marker starts at 0 0.131 then the third marker starts at 0.245 so if I want to use this file in Ableton I now need to manually add the start and end points um, which is just a lot of work and painful to do which would not be necessary if Ableton would just recognize these markers which are stored within the WAV file. So what I do uh, to make things a little bit easier when bringing this file into Ableton is to place each sample on an even start position and make the length of each sample uh, the same as much as possible. Now I'm not gonna make you sit here and watch me go through the whole process of doing that is basically selecting a marker cutting it and then pasting it on an uh, even time uh, within the file and do that for uh, all the markers uh, within this file so let me instead show you what the end result would look like as you can see there's uh, 30 different samples within this one and this one is already laid out evenly if I zoom in you can see that the first sample the duration is one second and that is the same for most of them there's a few that that are a bit longer uh, because well the samples last longer um, and I put a one second space between every sample as you can see here there's a one second space um, and this allows me to work a bit faster when bringing this file um, into Ableton and then setting all the start and end points for uh, the specific samples within the file with that said let's move over to Ableton and see how that works exactly let's go ahead and grab a new sampler from my templates now find my sample files which I have stored within my project ok the percussion let's have a closer look at the sample so there you have them there's like 30 percussion samples within this file and in a minute I will just duplicate this file here 30 times but let's start by setting the key range so I have to only do this once now select the file and hit duplicate or control D so 1 2 6, 7 8 9 10 20 30. As you can see I've selected all of them and now it says 30 samples are selected. So far so good. Continue by setting 
the selection I have 30 samples starts at 0 so go all the way up to 29 select distribute ranges equally just the way I want it now I want to add this to a macro but that option is not available because well there, is, there are no macros to assign it to so right click here and it says group now I have an instrument rack and now I am able to assign this to a macro there we go it goes all the way up to 127 so let's limit that to 29 exit map mode and there we go from 0 to 29 now of course every file still plays the whole sample file which is not what we're after you still need to define the start and ending points for each uh, file here by default the sampler the start and end points are defined in samples but if you right click on it you can switch to seconds which is way more convenient for what we are about to do now as you may recall I've made sure that every sample within the file starts at an even starting point so 0 seconds, 2 seconds, 4 seconds and so on and all of them last um, for 1 second let me first get rid of the 1 minute that is set in every sample let's pick 59 see otherwise that's stuff that happens and is annoying so anyway first sample starts at 0 ends at 1 second second sample starts at 2 ends at 3 so I went ahead and set the timings start and end points for all the samples so if I now quickly scroll through them you can see that everything is set properly and now it's just a matter of testing this out and see if it works I have some basic MIDI here nothing special so let's play this and see if we can get some noise out of it That's enough noise, I'd say. Okay, thanks for watching.